Hi, I'm your host. I am Clay Douglas, and my guest today is J.B. Campbell, and hopefully we've got the sound working right, and you can hear me okay. How about it, J.B.? J.B., I can't hear you. Uh, what's going on here? Hold on a minute. I can't hear you, JB. I'll try calling you back. Ah, shit. Alright, hang on a minute, we'll get it. You there? Yeah, okay, I got you now. Okay. Yes. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yes, sir, I can hear you fine. I hope, hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right, my guest is J.B. Campbell, and we are recording, and we are doing this. J.B., I, I just... I posted uh, quite a few things. I sent you one CIA, uh, ex CIA, talking about uh, exactly what we've been talking about. You know, that we are in a war, the, we are opposing the government here, and uh, it's getting pretty, uh, it's getting pretty uh, dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> the, uh, the Attorney General has admitted to a senator that uh, armed drones can be used under certain circumstances to kill Americans here in America. Um, we've got uh, a, a license issued to the president by the president to arrest Americans with no real charge, no due process, and to disappear that American into Guantanamo or Bagram or wherever, Abu Ghraib. Uh, you can go away and never be heard from again. We, we've seen that in the state of Virginia alone, according to the Rutherford Institute, a civil rights law firm in Virginia, that tw an average of 20,000 people a year are picked up and put in psych wards or mental institutions. Some of them come out, some of them don't. Most of them are veterans. The veterans are now considered by the government to be at the top of the potential terrorist list. So we're at war. We're at war. We just haven't been informed of that formally. But we are at war, and now we have to respond in kind. I have been telling people exactly that. For years now, for years, I've been saying this is a war. I mean, I watched what happened. What happened at Waco was a war on the American people, basically a psyops to kill our children to see how much we'd stand, how much we'd take. Yeah. And, well, and they keep again, doing that. They keep killing our children, Jay. They killed, uh, they killed children in uh, Waco. They killed children in Oklahoma City. They killed children in Columbine. And maybe they killed uh, uh, children in uh, Sandy Hook, although uh, we don't have any real way to tell about that. Was that just psychological operations, or are they, or were those satanic sacrifices, or is that just, you know, are they want to kill our kids first? They killed their own kids in Oklahoma City to make the militia look like uh, the devil. And that worked. That was a very good psyop. <clears throat> I started the militia movement. It took a horrible massacre of children of federal employees to turn it into a dirty word overnight. It was the only way they could stop it. So that's what we're up against. The question is, what are we going to do about it? That's always my question, and I always have a suggestion. <clears throat> and now, as I said last month, last time we spoke, Anyone in the gun-grabbing food chain, from the very top to the very bottom, is our deadly enemy and must be killed. 
there's no there's no getting around it. I mean, they, they're willing to kill us. They're announcing every day now that they're going to kill us. They're killing killing us already. <clears throat> they break into our homes and kill us uh, every day. It was uh, usually no excuse. Sometimes the wrong house. So. Uh, so, we just have to respond in kind. Anybody who would who would consider doing such a thing must be killed because he's a mad dog. He's got no conscience. He's got no. He's lost his moral compass. And these people, we don't have time to mess with them. They're going to kill us. They're dangerous. So we now we, we have had drone operators to think about. We <laughs> had we had somebody uh, that actually a police officer actually out there in California that. Uh, Pretty much said the same kind of thing on uh, on his Facebook page, and uh, they tracked him down and burned him down the same way they did Gordon Call. And we've also, but uh, on the on the positive side, I feel I wanted to get your input on this. We've got sheriffs like uh, Sheriff Richard Mack, who fought the Brady Bill, who established the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association. And we got, he's got maybe 300 members of, uh, of, of sheriffs that say they will uphold the, con the Constitution. They won't uh, help the government or allow the government to come in and, uh, and, and try to take our guns in their counties or their, uh, in their areas. But the Homeland Security, and I posted this up on my Facebook page, they, 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 they're bringing in armored vehicles with with two inch thick glass on the on the sides of the vehicles they'll stop anything uh, uh, up to and including a 50 caliber and they're bragging about it and showing that off in California so it looks to me that the war is escalating you're right they go after the veterans that's usually the third stage of a communist uh, takeover isn't it the first one they go after the farmers just like we did in Vietnam, just like they did here when they stopped hemp, our farmers from growing hemp, just like uh, they did in the Ukraine when they starved everybody to death. And it looks to me like they are, they've set all the little mechanisms in place to do exactly to American, Christian Americans, what they did to Christian, white Christian Russians in the, when they formed the Soviet Union when the when the Bolsheviks, which to to you uninformed and uneducated people, means Jews. We've got Homeland Security that's run by Jews, and but we're not supposed to talk about Jews, are we? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Now it's a good point to bring up about this being the communist, uh, because you know every communist. Takeover has been, you know, a, an individual type of thing. Every country has its own form of communism. So we we've, we've got to deal with <clears throat> American communism. We've got a president who's a communist. We've got an attorney general <clears throat> who's a communist. Uh, so we just have to understand the, the merciless, vicious homicidal nature of communism, <clears throat> whether it's in Russia or Ukraine or Zimbabwe, South Africa, <clears throat> or America. They've all got their, <clears throat> they're all different. You might not at first recognize it as communism, <clears throat> but when they want to take your guns away, as you say, take uh, uh, make, the, make the veterans into villains and uh, terrorists, then you know you know you got a communist takeover going on. And, so. and they're also going there for the churches. Of course, the Jews <laughs> infiltrated our churches. If you call if you call yourself uh, or you think your religion is Judeo Christian, you might as well be saying I'm a satanic Christian, thanks, in my opinion here. Yeah, we've we've got the Jewish problem. That's that's the fundamental basis of everything that's going on here is this uh, Jewish nature of America. We've, we've had this for a couple of centuries now. It's just coming to fruition. So we finally see what the plan has been all along to communize this place. The so uh, question is, though, again, what are we going to do about it? Rabbi Weiss, <laughs> Rabbi Weiss, 
said some call it communism, I call it Judaism for the masses. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, it tells how they want to raise Satan to, uh, you know, the uh, highest point on the pyramid. And, uh, I mean, this is a, Satan is a Jewish creation, and maybe uh, the Christian God, Yahweh, what the uh, Christian identity fools are bought into, you know, that may be, uh, that may be, uh, may have been the devil again pretending to be a Jewish God 3,000 years ago. Okay, uh, then the, uh, the question is, I mean, we know the problem. What do we you do? Know, we understand the problem. The question is, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to deal with the communist takeover? So, I think we have to concentrate on the military. We have to collaborate with elements of the military, and, and because you know they got <clears throat> they've got weapons. We've got a lot more weapons than the military has, but they've got some pretty high-fi, uh, high-tech stuff that we can that we need, and we, and we need the military guys that are on our side to overthrow the traitors in the military. Uh, we have to get serious about this. We have to take care of the traitors in the churches and the media and education and the government. Now, there, there's a couple of, there's some other a avenues. Now, like I've said, the, sh uh, the sheriffs, some of them, a few of them, are, are, are kind of on the people's side. But Joe Biden's son over there in Delaware is trying to make it, uh, trying to remove the arrest powers from the sheriffs. And yeah, um, we can't depend on the sheriffs. I mean, that some of them are grandstanding about about the Second Amendment, but they they conduct the war on drugs, you know, very happily and take federal money. Okay, that. that's a, say, that's oh, the oh, second oh, point. That's the sec Second Amendment right. That's the second point that I want to talk about. As most people know, and somebody who tries to point out on my chat room all the time, I'm an ex-con. I got busted for marijuana in Texas back when it was 99 years. Now, I just had Gordon Duff from Veterans Today, and I'm going to be writing for Veterans Today because I agree with you that we need to reach the veterans. I believe they, they sprayed us with Monsanto's Ancient Orange in, in Vietnam because they didn't want healthy, combat-hardened troops coming back to this country and seeing what a communist regime they were installing here. But uh, the, the, we, there's about 50 million people out there, maybe more, that have been demonized and made into criminals. Ayn Rand said the government has no control over anyone, uh, over, over honest citizens, so they got to make criminals out of us. That's what the drug laws, when you got the CIA bringing the drugs in, as I talked about in my book, Mystery Babylon, Operation Watchtower, they, uh, they use special forces to go down and build guide tower, radio towers in Columbia to, so they could bring planes into Albrook Air Force Base so they could ship the cocaine to Mena, Arkansas, nice little protected airport by their governor. And, and they made criminals out of me. They made me a criminal. I'm not supposed to be able to vote. I'm not supposed to be able to own a gun for the rest of my life. I, we got we got millions of Americans that have done that. We, they put more Americans in prison in the land of the free and the home of the brave than they did in, in Russia or China. And uh, I, I was talking with Gordon Duff yesterday, and I said, you know, if we abolished all the laws against victimless crimes, and and we we could probably get the, the support of 50 million ex-cons out there, and they're about to make they're about to make more criminals if 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 Obama or Biden sign an executive order taking away our guns, then anybody that has a gun will suddenly become a criminal, just like uh, anybody that owns gold. After after uh, they did that, after that uh, Roosevelt took away our gold and gave it to the banks. Did I lose you? Hang on, they they blocked us, JB. Okay, we're back now. We got it back up. 
Okay. That happens a lot. They tried to block us. They tried to stop this from uh, this show from going on, and that's that's homeland security for you, folks. That's uh, that's uh, the. the violent overthrow of the United States government. There's no, there's no other way to deal with this. We can't just wring our hands and, and say, like Alex Jones says, how awful it is. We have to be prepared to win this fight. Otherwise, we're gonna, we are gonna die. They're gonna kill a bunch of us. So let's start thinking big and think like Americans and figure out how to win this thing. And that means that every roadblock, we start shooting. There's no excuse for a roadblock in America. No excuse. It cannot be allowed. No gun grabbing, no knock on the door, no, can I look around your house, please? Uh, hey, Brandon Robb, uh, you're, you got us worried, Brandon. You've been talking on Facebook. Uh, we'd like you to go visit our doctor. Well, Brandon Robb, you know, we got to think about Brandon Robb. I think about this guy every day. This is an ex-Marine who was goofing around on Facebook with his brother and his sister in supposedly private communication. It wasn't open to the public. They put rock and roll lyrics on there. They talked about 9-11 uh, being an inside job. Now, here's, a, here's an ex-Marine, like 26 years old. He, he'd done a tour of duty in Iraq. A tour of duty in Afghanistan, and all of a sudden, some a bunch of cars come up, rolling up his driveway. He's barbecuing in the backyard with his family, no shoes on, and just a pair of shorts. Uh, FBI says, "Brandon, we're worried about you." Yeah, yeah, you know what you put on Facebook. Well, he said, uh, "You know, it's just what I think." Mm-hmm. The next thing he knows, he's on the ground with handcuffs going on, and he's being stuffed in a squad car. And the FBI sticks his face through the window and says, Brandon, you're not under arrest. We're just worried about you. And off he goes to a psych ward for, turned out it was five days. <clears throat> but while he was in there, the psychiatrist said, Brandon, I'm going to brainwash you. Brandon and Rob said, you're what? He said, I'm going to medicate you forcibly. Uh, but luckily, uh, Brandon's attorney. He didn't even know he had an attorney, I don't, I don't think. His mother got it for him. Uh, got a court order to get him released before the chemical lobotomy could be um, applied to his, his brain and turn him into a vegetable. But Whitehead, John Whitehead, found out that 20,000 people a year just in Virginia are picked up this way. My God. You know, the, most people have no clue. You know, remember uh, in, in 2004, George Bush, the story broke in New York Times about George Bush allowing the NSA to tap everybody's phones. And uh, that uh, the next month, somebody tapped my phone and arranged an accident. They rushed me to the hospital. And they did the same thing to me. They kept me drugged into oblivion. I have no memory of three months in the hospital for three broken ribs. And when I finally broke out and stopped, uh, they stopped drugging me and I stopped taking any kind of drug, you know, suddenly uh, then I'm being attacked from uh, everybody else, you know. It's, uh, uh, and, and, and they, they've done that to the Columbine victim, Mark Taylor, they're still drugging him with the same kind of drugs that they were using on me. Halcyon, Haldol, Valium, and uh, a little bit of morphine. Well, you were lucky to get out, and Brandon Robb was extremely lucky to get out. But here's, what do we do about this, though? Now, my, what I'm saying is, because some, some smart aleck wrote me and said, hey, uh, I don't get it. 
how come an ex-Marine like Brandon Robb gets busted for saying something on Facebook and you, the things you write and say, you're, you're running around at large? I said, well, uh, I would say that the main difference is that the cops knew that Brandon Robb did not own a gun. So they were pretty safe in coming to his house. So I think we have to develop an immediate action drill here. I mean, we got to think in these terms now all the time. If you see a cop car coming up your driveway, okay, well, that, you might have a, you know, if you know you got a warrant or you got some problem, that's one thing. But you see two cop cars or two strange cars, you know, you got to get your gun and get ready to shoot because uh, we have to be ready now to defend ourselves. This is a this is a dangerous period. We're in the most dangerous period right now. It's kind of like the twilight. It's not dark. It's not light. It's dusk. It's, things are there. There's a threat there, but it's kind of hard to make out in this light. So it's going to get a lot more dangerous. But it's dangerous right now, and we have to make decisions right now today because of all, you know, 20,000 guys in Virginia are, are going away every year. So, I mean, it's real. There's The threat is there. So we have to be prepared now to defend ourselves. We don't want to go have your experience. I mean, you, I don't know how the heck you got out either. It's a miracle. But Brandon Robb, very, very lucky. He should still be in there with his brain turned to mush. Because they don't like veterans. They don't like anybody who knows how to shoot. Third, 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 third segment of the population that they go after. Farmers first, intelligentsia next means anybody that's smart enough to know what they're trying to pull. And third is the veterans or police officers that are loyal to the old regime. That'd be any of us that take our, our oath seriously. But one of the problems we have, and, and this is, uh, again, this is echoed. This is echoed in... Uh, 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 China, for instance, the uh, they drugged the Chinese to establish their communist government there, and of course our government, the bankers here, helped finance the whole Mao Zedong thing and turned their back on uh, Chiang Kai-shek, and and they are they 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 if if more Vietnam veterans have committed suicide here, then were killed over there. We've got, we've got something else is happening here. They are, this is a psychological attack. This is, a, and the CIA is behind a lot of these uh, troll attacks and these trolls on the internet and the chat rooms. And uh, Mossad are certainly uh, financing their scenarium too. And, uh, what happens if a veteran, what did they, they want to do to Brandon Robb? They wanted to drug him. They give, uh, oh, you got post-traumatic stress syndrome? I, I don't know, uh, JB. I was lucky. I didn't have to, I didn't go to Vietnam. They tried to kill me before I got there. But, uh, uh, what's that, uh, what, what's, what's, what are they doing to, to the veterans to cause a veteran to commit suicide? They have drugged the population. We got uh, the whole population are uh, pretty much on, uh, uh, on Valium or pain pills or something, you know, doing quaaludes again, I guess. Uh, and, and the CIA controlled and the Mossad bring the cocaine, bring the heroin into the company, country. We got our troops guarding heroin uh, uh, poppy fields in, in Afghanistan. Where's all those poppies going? Where are, oh yeah, I guess the pharmaceutical companies are importing that legally into this country so they can uh, mix it with their medicine, huh? Yeah, I mean, well, you know. <laughs> now, how, how are we going to get people to react? How are we going to get people to stand up for themselves if they're drugged into oblivion? If they're, if they're, if they're just, if they, is that... And, and I don't, I frankly, I don't know whether it's uh, the drugs, I don't know whether it's the fluoride, I don't know whether it's the chemtrails, or, or whether it's the television. They don't call it programming for nothing. They're using it to feminize uh, uh, Americans, they're using it uh, to, to uh, deceive us. What, uh, 
How do we how do we oppose something like that? I mean, I've told people back uh, in uh, when I started the militia in New Mexico, and you were ahead of me uh, along that game. The best thing they could do is take the weapon out, clean it, load it, and shoot the damn TV. What's uh, how do we how do we do this? Um, I don't know if we can re react to these problems based on you know. Weak, weak character in our in our young people. <clears throat> we have to concentrate on the strong guys and come up with a, a program of uh, <clears throat> of overthrowing the government. See, we have to think big. We uh, we can't react to what they're doing to us because we'll never we'll never make it. We'll never be be able to be strong enough to overcome these uh, these things you're mentioning. We have to come up with our own offensive program to overthrow this government. And that means <clears throat> the whole thing is a fraud. It was a fraud from the beginning. We have to understand uh, America is not what we think it is. It never was. America was set up as a Masonic uh, entity to be, a, uh, to be the new world order, of, you know, the order of the new world. America and so we have to be ready to jettison to, to eradicate everything we think we we were trained to love about this the Constitution is a massive fraud it, it set up the central government see that's what people don't get they think if, if we just go back to the Constitution all oh, things would be good well, no the Constitution put us there the Constitution set up a central government to protect a central private bank called the first bank of the U.S., a Rothschild deal. You can't have a central bank without a central government. we got to understand the fundamentals of where America went wrong from the beginning. Uh, it was supposed to be, the, you know, a confederation, not a, federal, uh, not a federal government, not with powers to, to tax and destroy and go to war. It was just supposed to be a loose amalgam of state governments. We've got to be ready to abandon everything that has take, brought us to this spot, the Supreme Court. Where's the check and balance on the Supreme Court? How the heck did we get stuck with that? And like most, of, most of the Supreme Court justices are Jews also. The majority, I believe. I mean, we have a junta. We had, a, in, 19, in uh, 2000, we had five people who suspended the election and made George Bush the president. I mean, you know, Al Gore is no, is no prize. 